Hi all, my name's Ollie, this is Simply Stitchy and this is the fourth video in my Quilting with Cheating series. Uh, cheating with Quilting series? Eh, it works either way. Let's get into today's episode. This is as far as we've got with the quilt top so far. This is the Kitty the Cat collection of fabrics by Susie B and this particular design is called Catwalk. I'll put a link in the description box below to where I got the uh, materials for this particular quilt from and I'll also put a link to the other videos in this series at the top of the screen and in the description box for you. As you can see so far what we've done is we've done the pieced border around all sides of the quilt. As you'll remember from the last video what we've done is we've pressed all the seams to the dark side. Um, the reason why we do that is because particularly if you've got white fabrics if you um, press your seams to the white side there is a very distinct possibility that once you've got this quilt top sitting on a sandwich of backing fabric and wadding that will push the seam through um, so you'll be able to see it on the right side once your quilt top's finished. So in order to avoid that you always push or press rather the seams to the dark side and then you won't be able to see them quite as easily. The next step for this particular quilt is if we have a look at the original design there's another outside border which is just plain white that just frames the whole um, quilt top and that's the step that we need to do next. Now when we originally cut the the strips for the, the, the quilt top out in the first video which I'll link in the description box for you we cut them out to the width of the fabric which means they go that way which is fine but our quilt top is a little bit bigger than the actual width of the fabric so what we're going to need to do in order to get this to fit as a border all the way around is sew some of these strips together. We actually cut out five um, of the white strips so if you just put two to one side for a minute because you'll need those for the, the top and the bottom of the quilt top and they're actually the right size so you don't have to worry about those so we'll just put those to one side and what we're going to work with is the three remaining which brings us neatly on to cheat number eight I believe we're on which is when you need to make your strips longer stitch them all together and then chop them down after you've stitched them to the quilt I'll show you what I mean Here's our first strip and I'll just grab strip number two. Now there's two ways that you can actually sew your strips together. The first way, which is a way that's used on binding a lot, is to actually put the two strips together so that they make a right angle. And then what you'd do is you'd stitch from one corner to the other in a diagonal. And what that actually gives you obviously I haven't stitched them together at the moment but it gives you a diagonal line on the, the the quilt top which can be used as a little bit of a feature. The only thing that you've got to watch if you are going to use that method is that you've got plenty of fabric because what will happen is you chop this section off because that's excess fabric so you need to make sure that you've got enough fabric to do that. I'm not going to use that method all I'm going to do is I'm going to put the strips together right sides together and just stitch a quarter of an inch seam down there and I'm going to do exactly the same with the other strip on the other end so it's like that and what you'll end up with is a long strip of fabric. Once you've sewn the three strips together the next thing that you're going to want to do is press the seams. Because we're dealing with white fabric on this particular instance it doesn't really matter which side you press that seam to you can go to the left or to the right. 
or if you want to depending on how fiddly you want it to be you can actually open the seam up and press it open it doesn't matter because it's a quarter of an inch seam and because there aren't that many of them it shouldn't affect the quilt top too much just having the odd seam being pushed to the light side and it's, it's unavoidable anyway so don't worry about it. I don't know if you can see that if it's coming up on camera but there's the seam showing through from the other side. So where possible always go to the dark side. What we're going to do now is we're going to take our extra long strip of fabric we're gonna this is for the um the two sides of the the quilt top so what we're going to do is right sides together we're going to line it up with the top of the quilt like so and we're just going to stitch it all the way to the to the bottom of the quilt top when you've got your strip stitched onto your quilt top you'll find that you've got all of this spare at the the other end of the quilt at the bottom of the quilt so all you need to do is make sure you've got your quilt top out of the way grab your ruler and your rotary cutter and just cut it off level with the bottom of the quilt one side of your quilt should now look like that and in this instance what you want to do with that seam is press it to the dark side. The next thing to do, grab that bit of border that you've just snipped off and stitch it to the other long side of your quilt. When you've sewn the strip onto the other side in the same way that you did before line it up with the quilting ruler and just chop that excess off make sure the rest of the quilt tops out of the way first your quilt should now be looking something like this so give those seams a little bit of a press again make sure you go towards the dark side to stop it showing through to the front uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to put the strip across the top and the bottom. Grab one of your two remaining strips and what we want to do is we want to line it up with the edge of the white border that you've just sewn on and then just go right across the top. Then all you really need to do is trim the quilt top down so that you've got nice level edges on all sides. The next thing you're going to want to do is just check on the back of your quilt and any of these loose threads just give them a quick trim um, just to get them out of the way. In the same way that you find with pressing the seams to, to white fabric in particular if you leave these little bits of threads on the back and they get quilted so that they're underneath white fabric or light colours you stand a very good chance of being able to see the threads coming through on the right side of the quilt so just give the loose threads a little bit of, of a trim just get rid of as many of them as you can to cut down on the risk of that and here is the finished quilt top the next thing that you want to do is just give that a quick um, going over, one final press with your iron and the next stage is making the quilt sandwich. To make the quilt sandwich what you're going to need is a vacuum cleaner and a large flat surface. Now for most of us that means the floor which is where the vacuum cleaner comes into it because what you're going to want to do first is vacuum clean your floor so you don't pick up any debris on the backing fabric of your quilt sandwich. 
Now when we refer to a quilt sandwich, what we're actually talking about is your quilt top, your wadding or batting and the material that you're going to be using as the backing fabric. And all together those three create a quilt sandwich. And what you want is you want a flat surface that's big enough to put all those three layers completely flat, completely level, so that you can just push out any lumps, bumps, ripples or anything like that. When you're putting together your quilt sandwich always make sure that both your wadding and your backing fabric are at least two inches bigger than your quilt top. Now the reason for that is because sometimes when you're actually quilting on your quilt top both of these layers can get pulled in as you do the stitching and what you want to make sure is that they don't get pulled in so far that they've gone underneath the quilt top. So always make sure that you leave an overhang to allow for that. What we need to do now is we need the quilt sandwich to stay in place while we actually start to quilt it and to do that you can do one of two things. You can either, number one, use something called a basting spray which is a temporary adhesive that you can spray to the rear of your quilt top and the top of your backing fabric, push the whole lot down and that will hold it in place for you. Now I don't tend to use that method because I find basting spray a little on the pricey side. What I tend to use is these things, safety pins. Um, and what you want to do is start in the middle of the quilt push the safety pin through the top, through the wadding and out through the backing fabric below. Now if you're using um, a carpeted surface for this what you might want to do is put like a piece of cardboard between your quilt sandwich and the carpet so that you don't safety pin your quilt to your carpet. Trust me I've done that a few times. Um, once you've got it all the way through come back through to the front of the quilt and fasten your safety pin and then push the quilt sandwich back flat and just work your way around the quilt doing that putting these every four or six inches or so just to make sure that it holds everything together. In the next video what we'll be doing is we'll be starting to quilt or do the quilting stitches on the quilt sandwich and actually binding the whole lot together. So if you want to see that one make sure you subscribe and click that little bell so that YouTube can give you a notification when that video goes live. If you like today's video give it a thumbs up and why not go and check out some of the other content on my channel using either these links coming up any minute now or the ones that I'll put in the description box below for you. Whatever video you go and check out next I hope you come back here to see the next one and in the meantime whatever you're sewing, whatever you're sewing it with. Embrace your creativity and have fun. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.